Last week on Fresh Dev, we introduced you to the options panel. And this week, we're going to make it super sexy. Welcome to this week's episode of Fresh Dev. I'm your host, Dan. And I'm Scott. Scott, we've been working on a plugin. That's right. We've been developing it from the hypothetical where we just talk about um, sort of how to go about planning what your plugin's going to be, what you're going to choose, all the way to sprucing up or creating the options panel, I should say, of your plugin. Yep, that's right. Um, what is this show about, Dan? Oh, so what what's Fresh Dev about? Thank you. And <laughs> I'm not Matt, so I... What That's am I right, talking yeah. about here? No. So so Matt's Matt's away right now, so I'm filling in right now for today. But what is the show about? So Fresh Dev is sort of like your 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 light look, your introductory look into development, um, specifically with us on the WordPress framework. Yeah, you're doing great for not being here yeah. for a few episodes. Nice. <laughs> Just a little pause for the cause. Uh, subscribe to us at our, our YouTube page at Slocum Studio. And go to our blog for some fantastic blog content about these plugins and our, for our other web shows as well, like Pressus and SEO Lunch at slocumstudio.com slash subscribe. So last week, you and Matt talked about uh, sort of setting up and creating the options panel. That's right. So with your WordPress plugin, having a place to go to tweak some of your options, some of your settings within your plugin to kind of make it your own. That's somebody using the plugin. Yes, correct. And then if, uh, if you guys have been following along with the series, yeah. last week we only added one option to our right. panel. Right. We are hiding it on pages, mm -hmm. um, and that's all our particular plugin is going to do. Your plugin might have, you know, several Tons options. Tons of options. Uh, 20, you know. 30, 3? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm impressed as we talk about plugins that have setting after setting. We have sub-settings within other sub-settings. Yeah. So it can get pretty intense. We're just kind of, again, starting, kind of starting to talk about it a little bit. But now I want to talk a little bit about, or I'd like to know, I want to kind of change the design a little bit. That's right. I want to yeah, kind of yeah. make it look maybe a little bit more like traditional WordPress press plugins or maybe a little different. So how would I go about doing that? Yeah, so you have uh, two different you know, ways to kind of enhance your options panel, two different design choices. Um, the first one would be to you know, make it seamlessly match up with WordPress. You're using WordPress's default administration style. So for instance, like buttons mm -hmm. or um, input fields. Um, and then your second way would be to actually create a, your own kind of custom design. You know, maybe make it in Photoshop first, Create, uh, make all the HTML, CSS, and kind of bring it in. Sure. We'll, we'll talk about both of those today. Um, I think it's uh, important to note on our plugin, we're just going to use the default WordPress styling. Cool. Seems to be a little cool. bit easier. And then yeah. um, another uh, feature to that would be uh, your plugin kind of integrates right within WordPress. Doesn't look like it's, uh, I mean, it looks like it's meant to be there. Right. It doesn't look like it's, uh, whoa, what's up with this <laughs> page, you know? This looks, this looks like nothing else. And, you know, I don't want to scare people. I'm developing a plugin, and I don't really want to scare people. I want it to look like the rest of the WordPress backend, the rest of my dashboard area, you know, things like that. So how am I going to design this to sort of match those design elements of WordPress? All right. So you, uh, something to keep in mind is you uh, control the HTML output mm -hmm. of your options page, and we kind of went over that in our last mm -hmm. video sure. um, when we rendered the page. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're able right. to, you know, kind of target in CSS any of the classes or IDs, and I can see Dan's like, this is about up here for him. No, it's cool. <laughs> now he's getting it. Um, anyway, so it. you're able to target, you know, your classes, your IDs. Mm -hmm. You control the elements that you display, right. whether it's a heading, right. uh, a, a heading two or heading four, something like that no, I mean that's typical stuff even with like CSS coding and things like that um, th the same idea yes it's implemented it differently here but the same kind of idea with classes and IDs things like that in CSS yep and your um, all these classes and IDs uh, do er already exist within WordPress at least in the method that we're going to use sure. so um, let, I'll just run through kind of the list. Of um, course, yeah. A good thing that you want to do, we talked about this last week, is to wrap your settings panel mm -hmm. in a div with a class called wrap. Right. Uh, WordPress uses this to kind of format, you know, all mm -hmm. of the, the the settings and whatnot. Um, you can include different admin notices. Okay. There are styles for admin notices, mm -hmm. like a, just a regular notice or a warning, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Those classes do exist. Okay. Um, another way to kind of enhance or make for a better user experience mm -hmm. on your settings panel, your sure. options panel, would be to include a submit button in more than one spot. Right. And what that does is allows the user, 
you know, let's say you have 20 different of options. Course, yeah. Maybe at option number 10, you put another button in there. That way you don't have to scroll all the way down right. to save your settings. Right. That's a great point because you're going to be using this device. And I've known myself even, I've been tweaking settings and you're at the very top of the page. You change one little piece of criteria about the setting. You hit the, not that maybe not necessarily the back hour, but then you go somewhere else in the back end or you go and you take a preview and you haven't saved anything. And you're like, why isn't this working? Yeah. It's because I didn't see that save button. It's and if it's all over, right, and if that submit <laughs> button's all over that plugin settings page or that options panel, it's easy to see. Exactly. Um, so now I'm just going to run through um, a couple of the mm -hmm. styles that already exist okay. within, within the WordPress admin area. Awesome. Um, that includes the pre tag and the mm -hmm. code tag. Uh, headings two, three, and four come out looking very nicely, so something you may want to include. Okay. Um, screen icons, you yep. have various different screen icons to show, such as editing, dashboard, uh, themes, plugins. There's more than that. Cool. Um, and I think 3.6 might even have some new yeah. ones. So uh, whenever that does come out, <laughs> probably be out by the time this video yeah, comes out. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and then also you have uh, some buttons. You can right. uh, there's a class called button uh, dash primary okay. and button dash secondary, cool. and those will be styled. Uh, primary will be blue, secondary mm -hmm. will be kind of like a grayish uh, right. outline button. There's also styles for tables, input elements like text boxes and and um, you know mm -hmm. little one line inputs, yeah. and also some tabs. So let's say mm -hmm. you want to have multiple. Uh, excuse me, settings pages mm -hmm. within your panel, you could say, okay, tab one, tab two, tab three. WordPress provides um, all of this styling for That's you. That's awesome. Now, I do want to make one more mention. Of course. I found a plugin uh, by a developer named Frank. <laughs> uh, he, he's in uh, Germany. I, I'm not going to say his last name because I will completely mispronounce it. Um, we'll have the resources on uh, the notes. That's right. Yes, this is on GitHub, and he calls it WordPress Admin Style. And what this does, it just adds a little panel. It's a plugin, mm -hmm. and it adds a little panel kind of similar to what we've been doing, to your uh, WordPress dashboard on the left-hand side. And you're able to click on that panel, and you'll see all of the default styling. He gives you a little bit of code snippet, so you can say, hey, I can take this, put it in my panel, mm -hmm. and modify it here or there. Uh, and you'll be able to see all of the default styling. So it's a really helpful tool when you're going to, you know, going through this and creating your options panel to look like WordPress. Oh, awesome. That's that's great. So it's almost like an inception, like a settings within a settings, if you will. Kind a of, settings yeah. settings to it, create extra, to help you create the settings. It helps now. you, yes, exactly. That's a great tool. Yeah. So I've been playing around with this for a while now and tweaking my settings, and now I want to go off on my own. That's right. You want to have your own look and feel, right? You want to make it kind of completely separate from I WordPress. think the WordPress backend looks like trash. I, am a mem I, I create magic members or cer certain other plugins that have their own specific look and feel that I want people to be enveloped in my ecosystem. That's right. So how do we go about Yeah, that? how would we do the custom design aspect of this? Thing? All right, let me tell you. I think it's a good idea to still wrap your content in the div with the class of wrap. Again, just so all the formatting is you know, uh, output correctly. Um, but you can go ahead and actually create your own custom screen icon. If you oh, remember cool. in the last episode, we talked about mm -hmm. the screen underscore icon function. Mm -hmm. And you can pass in your own string to that. Yep. That will allow you to, again, using CSS, target that icon and you can have whatever you may choose done as like an argument sort of uh you would target the id okay. of the uh element okay. that wordpress outputs okay so it'd be like icon dash um you know share buttons and okay. you could have your own share button icon or whatever plugin you're oh, actually very cool. creating very cool um what you can do is you could have custom admin notices mm -hmm. or just notices in general, meaning you could style the colors of the right. notices, the borders, right. uh, you know, when they're displayed, Change all the that. colors and stuff like that to something different. If random. you want to have like a background yeah. image, um, background if you've image. if you've ever used uh, any of you developers have used WooCommerce, you'll notice when you install it, they have like a purple notice and yep. it's got the clouds in the mm -hmm. background. You can actually yes. do all that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you also have you, – you, you could create your custom button style. So you could have like a green button or a purple button right. or whatever color you might want. Now, uh, how are you going to get all this CSS in there? Right. There's actually a hook, and we've been talking about hooks in our yep. previous uh, episodes. Um, this one's called admin in queue scripts. Mm -hmm. And this one will allow you to in queue or basically load okay. a style sheet. Mm -hmm. And you can actually tailor it so it loads specifically on your page okay. only. So it's not loaded anywhere else in the back end. You won't have any conflicts. So what you can do is there's a hook variable that's passed okay. to this, um, actually to this hook, and you can see what page you're on. Basically the menu slug, going back a couple episodes, uh, an episode when we registered our 
uh, options panel. Yep. The menu slug, you can determine if you're on your page mm -hmm. and load the style sheet that you might need. The style sheet's going to include your custom button styles, your admin notices, uh, all that stuff. That's great. So That's awesome. That Those are your two different options that you have as far as go uh, going about enhancing mm -hmm. or sprucing up your options panel. We'll have a bunch of references as well as some sort of images and stuff mm -hmm. to make it easier for you on our video content. Um, but there you have it. Now you can kind of tweak up and spruce up your options panel a little bit, a little bit better. Scott, I want to thank you so much for being on the show once again. Thanks it's for great to have me. you on here. Um, if you guys have any questions about what you just said, something of it went over your head like it might have gone over mine a little <laughs> bit, please let us know in the comments below on YouTube or on our website. You can go to slocumstudio.com slash subscribe to get more of these videos as we continue to look at plugin development because this is a still continuing series. Or go and subscribe to our video content on YouTube so you can get more of these videos delivered right to your YouTube channel as you see. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, guys.